name's David Sly. I'm a, a food and wine travel journalist who's based in Adelaide, and this has been my patch to write about uh, incredible food and wine experiences in South Australia for the last 25, 30 years or so. And Adelaide serves as a fantastic hub for a city that's completely ringed by wine regions, and all of those are within easy striking distance. We're in the Barossa Valley at the moment. We're on a high point called Mengler's Hill. Um, and it's a, at a, a junction point where the Barossa Valley floor meets the High Eden Valley. So we're on the top of a granite ridge here, overlooking the whole Barossa Valley. And from here you get an understanding of, of the layout. And the valley floor has got this little succession of villages that, um, that come down. There's probably eight or nine villages. Tanunda is the main town in the middle of, of the valley, but then fanning each direction there's a lot of these smaller villages. Charlie Melton from Charles Melton Wines. This is our flagship wine, Nine Popes, made from some of these uh, magnificent old Grenache bush vines, as we call them. All of these small farms had grapes as a component right from their outset, and over the years the wine industry has grown and grown and grown. Some of those ancient vines are still producing uh, wine, so there's up to 150, 170 year old vines that are still producing here, which is just unique in the world. These barrels actually represent 142 years worth of wine history for the Sepples uh, family in Sepples Hill Winery from 1878 to 2019. So in 1878, Benno decreed that the winery would lay down a 500 litre barrel on its finest tawny port to stay in the cellar for 100 years before bottling. The Barossa still likes to uh, remind people that it's not a monoculture, it's not just about the grapes. It's got a very strong food culture, there's a lot of artisan food producers here um, and you understand that close connection of this region, the land to the people to the products and it's a very cohesive conversation. Um, the people who make the food are in direct collaboration with the people who make the wine. I'm Saskia Beer and this is the Pheasant Farm. It hosts uh, many beer family businesses, including Maggie Beer's Farm Shop, the Eatery, Duran Distillery, and my business, which is Saskia Beer Farm Produce. It's still our family home, essentially. I mean, just because other people are enjoying it and utilising it, this farm is always going to be our home and it will always stay in our family. Food and wine tourism experience is trying to show that wine is the core of it, but it's not just about what you're tasting in the glass. There's a bigger experience. Yeah, the gin explosion is interesting. There's botanicals from the region. The food explosion has, has certainly um, captured the imagination of people. That's boosted the local dining culture. There's really good restaurant experiences here. There's really good boutique accommodation where you actually stay in among the, the vineyard and you get a, a feeling of what it's like to be in amongst the vines. Okay. So this cave was dug in 1916 for the purpose of growing mushrooms and then it fell into disrepair for a number of years and now I've um, managed to reinstate it so we're actually growing mushrooms again. About uh, six or seven days old now and they are oyster mushrooms and ready to head upstairs to the kitchen where they were turned into delicious dish by our chefs. We have uh, a range of um, wines for people to taste as well as uh, a different assortment of foods on offer too. We pride ourselves in being very, very uh, conscious of the quality of the food and wine we produce in area. It's a 30 minute expressway drive south to McLaren Vale. It's a 15 to 20 minute drive through an expressway east into the Adelaide Hills region. It's a one hour, less than a one hour drive north via another expressway to come to the Barossa to move between the city and regions that each have their own quite separate personality. As you drive through them and spend some time in it, you understand that they aren't just generic wine regions. They've really got separate identities, separate characters uh, involved in the, in the wineries and their reasons why they choose one area over another. Um, it's quite a compelling story for any traveller to, to actually feel by getting on the ground and, um, and travelling through it.